Good afternoon. I'm your host, Steve Bassnett, and along with Aaron Marsden, I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of Canasa and Security Canada to our weekly online learning session. I would like to say a special thank you to Interrange for their support and sponsoring today's session. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Omer Bubica, Director of Sales for Interrange. Throughout Omer's 24 plus years in the security industry, he has worked with multinational manufacturers in the area of, of intrusion, access control, and video. Omer has been with Interrange going on two years now and was previously with Interlogix for 14 years as their national account manager. Omer strives to exceed his customers' expectations and is always looking to build mutually beneficial partnerships. Omer has been tasked with establishing and growing the inner range business in the Canadian market. Feel free to type any questions you may have for Omer during the session into the chat window, and he will respond during the Q&A portion roughly 20 minutes from now. I'll now turn the session over to Omer. Welcome, Omer, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I just want to confirm that you guys can see my uh, screen there. Yeah, looks great. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Steve. Appreciate that. Uh, and thank you, Canasa, for making these uh, webinars possible. It's a great opportunity for us to, to get the word out with, uh, with the lack of the shows, uh, hopefully coming up uh, in the not-too-distant future. And uh, everybody on the call, thank you very much for taking the Sorry, Omar, I think we lost your audio, sir. Okay, apologies, everyone. We'll just give uh, Omar a second to, uh, to switch over. I know he uh, is prepared for this with a, a backup microphone, so we'll just give him a second to switch, and we'll be right with you. Is that working? Yes, sir. Welcome me? back. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, good thing I was sort of prepared. <laughs> uh, technical difficulties. Anyways, um, before I get going uh, with uh, chatting about uh, Inception specifically, I want to just, for those of you that are not familiar with Interrange, just want to take a couple of minutes here to sort of tell, tell the story a little bit about the company. Interrange uh, itself is Australian-based company. We are based uh, in, in Melbourne. Uh, we've been around for over 30, 30 plus years now, and uh, that office that you're looking at there is our head office where we do all of our R&D, uh, we do our manufacturing and uh, uh, warehousing in that facility as well, and then we do all of our development uh, there as well for hardware as well as software, so it, it is great to have our entire development team under one roof, uh, you know, the advantage of that is if, if we need to make any changes to the product or or do or react to, to anything going on specifically with our products and deployment, uh, we can do that very easily from, from one location. Uh, a little bit more on the Interrange story. We, we do have a global presence now. We're expanding rapidly. Uh, you've seen, seen by obviously our presence in Canada as well as in the US. Our major markets, um, just simply due to the proximity of our uh, headquarters uh, is definitely Australia where we actually hold a 30, uh, percent market share so quite a presence there we do a lot of business in New Zealand as well and in parts of Southeast Asia and in Europe as well through our um, uh, through through our office in the UK that's been there for for roughly 20 years uh, we now distribute into 35 countries globally and we have more than 50,000 systems installed so by no means a startup but a little bit uh, newer in the North American market for sure what do we do as a company? Well, overall, we, uh, we, we conduct a lot of research and development of, um, and, and, and manufacture, of course, uh, cutting edge IP 
uh, based electronic and uh, security and access control solutions. So when, when I talk about uh, any of our solutions here today, they're going to refer to uh, what I would call a unified or native um, access control intrusion solution. That means that we, we are able to deliver both of those functionalities within the same system itself. So uh, we do all of our development in-house, none of that's farmed out to, to outside companies or anything like that. Uh, and we have, as a company, a very big focus on integrations with uh, with outside third-party uh, uh, vendors that uh, you know cover things such as video intercoms, elevators, building management systems, and things like that. Why Interange? Um, well, uh, when you look at the product selection overall, definitely very scalable. Today, I'm going to be spending my time talking about Inception, which is really an SMB or, for lack of a better word, entry-level solution. And then we have a whole other solution in our Integrity platform, which is a full-blown enterprise uh, a solution, um, a really, really a cutting edge solution that's, uh, you know, scalable up to uh, a global system if required. Again, all of our systems are uh, unified or native access control and intrusion. Inception is, is like that, as is integrity. Uh, and then, you know, we, as I said before, we really have that philosophy around open architecture and working with third party vendors to, to create more uh, capabilities within the system. When we start getting into the enterprise space, this is an important distinction. I bring that up, even though we're not talking about enterprise product today. Interrange as a company has a philosophy to deliver an overall uh, lower total cost of ownership. And we do that through our so software licensing. Many of our competitors will do things such as backdating on software maintenance agreements. The, the software maintenance agreements will be mandatory and things like that, which uh, can really lead to a much higher overall cost of the, the system for the end user. Um, some reference sites to share with you just to kind of give you some scope of what we work on. Most of these systems would be done under our integrity platform, but it does give you a sense of uh, what kind of business we do. Obviously, very strong in the, uh, the healthcare uh, market as well as in the uh, education market as well. Within the Australian market, over the last number of years, there's been six major universities that have gone out to, to update their systems. We've won five of those, uh, and the most recent being Monash University, which is 5,000 plus readers and over 100,000 students in, enrolled uh, at that university. So you can see pretty strong in the education space. We do some um, uh, municipalities as well as critical infrastructure as well. So it gives you kind of a scope of what we do uh, on the enterprise side of things. Um, the products uh, that um, you know, I'm referring to and have uh, already on a couple of occasions are Inception, uh, which I'll spend most of my time covering off uh, today, and then Integrity, which, which I said earlier is our enterprise uh, level platform. Both of them are um, uh, award-winning platforms, and uh, with that, I'm going to get into um, a little bit more detail on the inception. So one of the questions gets asked, why would I look at, if I'm looking at Interrange as a solution, why would I look at inception versus integrity? Um, and, and really, it comes down to two fundamental questions. The first one, is it a single site? Um, um, deployment or is it a multi-site? If we're getting into multi-site where we're, you know, utilizing client server uh, situation like that, we have uh, a lot of remote uh, buildings and things like that, we would be looking at integrity. Inception is a, a very powerful uh, single site solution and I'll show you some of the capacities and things like that, but just it is limited to just that on the on, on being single uh, site. Um, the other thing um, to consider is, is the type of integrations that you're looking to, to achieve. We do have a very powerful in integration with Inception uh, with Milestone. Um, so what, what happens with that is essentially Inception um, ends up being sort of the access control engine behind uh, Milestone and then everything is run through the Milestone BMS. So we, we can do some integration definitely through the Milestone platform um, uh, with Inception, but um, really when you're looking at to large scale integration with wire wireless locks, building automation systems such as BACnet, Modbus, into HVAC, lighting control, and things like that, you'd, you'd definitely be looking at the integrity solution. So let's get into the Inception product. What you're looking at here is a control panel. This is really the brains that runs the entire uh, system. Out of the box, um, this controller is a four-door access control solution, as well as an eight-zone alarm solution. So it is able to dial out to any st central station through a couple different methods. Um, one being through our Sky Tunnel um, IP service, or just through a regular di dialer uh, that would attach the, to the to the controller itself. 
there, there's a couple of, of key sort of philosophies that kind of went into developing this product. Uh, first of all, we wanted to make it cost effective uh, as, as most, most companies want to do uh, and be as competitive as we can in the marketplace. And there's a couple things that drive that. First of all, not having any uh, software uh, to, to install is another big one because of, uh, of, of, the, of the, um, the, the connection through, through the web browser. Um, the, the other thing was to make it very simple for the installer to deploy the solution uh, and make it really easy for the installer uh, or sorry, the end user to, to work with the solution once it's being installed. So you'll see that as I kind of carry on through this and, and the demonstration, uh, that that's, those are some of the key areas uh, that we you know, wanted to, to focus on. So the system itself is a, um, um, uh, sorry, I just saw the note about the lost audio. Um, so um, I think we fixed that. So it, the system itself is an intrusion system, an access control system. We can deliver basic automation uh, as well, provides a very uh, powerful uh, web interface um, that allows you to kind of work with the system. As far as capacities, you can see um, the size of the system here. We can do up to 128 doors or 256 readers on the access control side. Uh, obviously, 256 readers is if you're doing an in-out in uh, scenario with readers, up to 96 partitions, 99 keypads, and up to 512 uh, inputs or outputs. And we also uh, can, can do elevator control uh, up to 32 floors, uh, sorry, 96 floors or 32 elevator cars. It's the web interface really that sort of ties into the cost and the convenience. So uh, with that, you have no server, no software, no licenses, regardless of if you're using a desktop, laptop, um, a tablet or a phone, uh, the, the look and the feel of the application is gonna look very, very similar because of the responsive design. So we're essentially looking into the, the screen that you, the, the, the dashboard when you, when you log in, um, this it looks obviously looks very similar between uh, these different devices when you log in. Um, the first thing that you would see when you log in through that uh, browser would be the dashboard, which would allow you to provide you status of the system, uh, as well as give you uh, a quick interface for control of the system. On the installation side, I, I said uh, earlier, uh, there was a real priority to make it easy for installers to, to deploy, deploy this type of solution. So this commissioning checklist that uh, is built into the product really kind of runs you through the entire commissioning of the product. And uh, it is actually just a, a logical sequence of how you would program the system for both access control and intrusion. Um, when you go through uh, a certain area and move on to the next, it switches to green, indicating to you that you've, you've, you've completed that area and moved on to the next one. I'll show that more through the, um, through the demonstration of the product. I touched on the milestone integration as well. Uh, that's like, as I said earlier, a dynamic integration where um, you know, Inception really is the access control machine in terms of user schedules. Um, uh, you know, door status, alarms, arming of areas and different things like that. And then we can put, put that onto the VMS uh, interface there. And then we, all those uh, devices within the system would then be dynamic through, through, through the milestone uh, interface there. Uh, I touched on the, the, the ease of connection to the system. I think this is a real plus for uh, the Inception product when you look at it against a lot of the competitors in the market. Obviously, we can do a direct connect through Ethernet. Uh, something that is unique to us is a, a Wi-Fi adapter. Simply take a USB Wi-Fi adapter, plug it into the USB port. Now, when you show up on site, if there's no network or internet in place, you, you have the ability to Wi-Fi directly to the controller and, and program it as well. So a, a little bit of convenience added for the technician for sure. And then the thing that really sets us apart is our Sky Tunnel hosting service. And what that, what that does for us is uh, allows... Uh, for a really, really easy connection to the system. So what's required essentially is um, uh, internet access. So connect this to a router that has outside internet access, uh, no ports to forward, no uh, static IPs or anything like that. Scan the QR code that you can see on the controller there and you're essentially into the panel for, for programming or operation. And I'll show that again through the demonstration, but the, that's one of the definitely big differentiators for us. Uh, just, I'm going to highlight some of the devices that we use to build out the system. The Wi-Fi adapter I mentioned earlier as an option that allows us to directly connect, whether it be from our phone or from our laptops for 
Typically that would be used for programming. I don't think it's an effective method for the customer to connect to their system. Uh, they could do that, but uh, I think it's more suitable for uh, an installer uh, to, to, to use in, in the event there is no network set up at, at the location and, and they start programming the system. If we're expanding US capability, then we would use a, a, a USB hub expansion as well. Um, some of the devices that we would use to expand the system, uh, the first one uh, we call a SLAM or a standard LAN access module. It's basically a two-door uh, module and allows us to, to build out the system for access control functionality uh, through those boards. And then uh, we also have the eight input expander board, which essentially does that as eight inputs. It's also a host board for additional uh, unibus boards. And the unibus boards are, are, are really neat. First of all, they're a smaller footprint and uh, they're, uh, I think, roughly half the cost of the eight input expanders. So it's a real cost effective way of building out the system, whether that be for inputs or uh, for outputs. And so these are just a smaller footprint. And I'll show you some diagrams as well um, as to how these kind of fit into the overall system. We also have a unibus board uh, that provides for all elevator control. We can do that through input and output boards, but this basically consolidates it onto one board for up to 16 floors. This board actually provides functionality for a couple things. First of all, um, it will provide button feedback for the audit trail of the system. So if someone um, through destination control has access to floors three, four, and five, presses floor five, it's going to tell us in the audit trail that they went to floor five. The other thing it's going to do is once the, um, once the user has pressed floor five, it's going to shut off access to floors three and four. So someone can just get into the elevator and press another floor and gain access uh, to an area they're not supposed to. So there are a couple of dis different advantages uh, with the, with the uh, Unibus elevator board. We also have a... Uh, um, our, our card readers and cards and pegs that we, we offer as part of our system. We use as a standard uh, MyFair uh, Desfire uh, EV2 card formats, which are one of the most, most secure that I've heard of. Uh, all of our readers are OSDP and everything is, is run on a uh, RS-45 LAN. So very, very easy to, to power and very secure uh, for your system as well. Uh, this is a typical topology of the system working off the main inception controller. We have a reader port that uh, really, um, obviously, you, you know, the system is, is four, four readers out of, the, out of the box. As I said, you connect them right through the reader port there. And then if you're building the system out over the 45 LAN, then you would obviously connect through that port and then expand the system accordingly. And expansion would ha happen, you know, through a few different ways. Um, through Annexter, we offer uh, uh, assembled kits, and these kits uh, basically uh, come pre-assembled and tested. So uh, there's an advantage, obviously, for convenience to purchase them in a kit, but also the fact that we actually power them up, check that they're operational, and then we ship them out assembled. So if you're looking at uh, kit two here, it's, it's, it's basically the controller itself, the power supply that comes with it, and then you have an eight input expansion board. So uh, in a scenario, if you're gonna do uh, four doors, um, you would do that off the main controller. And then if you wanted to add an additional, say six zones of intrusion, um, uh, you can do that very easily within one enclosure, just as, as it's illustrated here. Um, to expand the system out just simply for access control, if we want to add additional four doors, we would start with a, um, um, sorry, an enclosure that would come with a uh, three amp uh, smart power supply, which would deliver enough power to run the locks and the doors and everything that you need. And then you would have two boards within that enclosure, each of them supporting up to two doors or four readers if you were going to go to a in out scenario there. Uh, continuing sort of another option in terms of expansion, and, and I wanted to show you um, how we do with the Unibus um, boards. And so we would, again, start with enclosure with the appropriate power supply. The eight input uh, expander would be our host module. And then through that Unibus connection, the red connection that you see there, we would be able to add additional eight zones. And you can see there's still um, more space within the enclosure. So we can utilize that to add an additional eight zones or even another um, uh, eight zones on top of that as well. So bringing all, um, this enclosure with expansion uh, up to 32 zones in, in total. So that kind of covers off kind of the overview of the product. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna switch over to um, 
uh, another screen and um, and share with you. Uh, sorry, bear with me. Just want to make sure you can see the demo screen there, Steve. Yes, sir. Looks good. Okay, perfect. So as I said earlier, uh, one of the key points was that ease of connection to the system. And so um, we've now connected the, imagine we're on site, we've connected to a router with internet access, uh, plugged it in, we've scanned the QR code in, and we've essentially gone to this point here. And what it does is it sets us up in a browser and it sets us up with the serial number that's unique and the IP address is uh, automatically assigned to the controller itself. So um, I've scanned the QR code. We have a little shortcut where I would just double click on the, um, the logo and that, that just inserts the default installer code and then it would get me into the system. You can see just how quick uh, we got into the system. <clears throat> because it's a hosted solution, if there was any updates or changes that needed to happen in terms of the firmware, we would have a little yellow box up at the top here. Uh, the boxes at the top obviously give you a status of what's going on within the system. So I actually powered down my uh, system and it's actually told me what's happened. So it's, I just have a demo kit that sits on my desk. So when I power down, there's a message. If there was firmware that needed to be updated, we would have a yellow box here. We would click on it and it would just automatically take you through the whole process. So there's no searching out and downloading and things like that. It's very, very quick to update. The checklist uh, actually gives us status of what we've done in, in terms of the overall programming. So it indicates that we've done one of 22 steps. I'm gonna reset that checklist and kind of go back to the dashboard uh, at first. So if I was gonna log into the system, the first thing I would typically see would be the dashboard and that allows me uh, control the system. So whether that be uh, an access control door that I wanna un unlock or whether it be uh, as an area that I wanted to arm, I can do that very, very easily. You can hear the control panel probably in the background beeping, indicating what we've done with the system. So I, it also um, uh, provides um, instant status. So if I was actually at a reader, which I am right now on my demo board, you can see it automatically, it's dynamic. It shows you that um, with this type of system, when you have intrusion and access control native to the, to the same system, I, all, I can also swipe multiple, multiple times to actually arm the system. So you can see the system has been armed there with multiple swipes. It's actually three swipes that I have programmed. You can do it with two as well. And then I can go into this part here and uh, disarm it as well. Um, so we also have, you probably noticed that the change of status um, when I change, uh, when I actually arm or disarm the room. So what we have a little automation string set up with the HVAC and the lighting. So when I actually arm the meeting room, it shuts off the lights and the HVAC, obviously indicating that someone isn't in the space. So why, why would we need to continue to run that? So easily, very, very easy to do that through the programming with, within Inception. So, so that's a dashboard. If I wanna do any more complex functions, I can go to this other side and then I can set unlock uh, durations and different things like that uh, in, uh, in, in terms of the access control side and then uh, various functionality that I can do. I can arm with a delay. Uh, I can do partial mode, so I can do that right from the, from, from the interface here, so very easy to work with. Going back to the commissioning checklist, <clears throat> as I said, the idea behind that is really making it very easy for the installer uh, to, to program the system. So uh, the feedback that I've received thus far is you, you almost don't even need to go through training because it kind of walks you through the whole thing. And so I'll show you the sort of the first uh, example of um, you know, what it's like to program. So you go into the area, you're going to program and so your network settings uh, we can, you know, uh, you know, configure the Wi-Fi or the Sky Tunnel, which is default on because we're connecting, like I said, through through just through a um, internet access router. Uh, but if you're not sure the area that you're programming, you can um, you can select Read More, and it's going to give you a full sort of manual explanation of what you're doing within that section. Let's assume that we've programmed this and we're done. I'm going to go back to the checklist. You can see that it's changed to green and it essentially walks you through the entire programming of the system. Uh, it's also worth noting that our um, all of our modules, uh, when connected to the control panel, are all, all auto discover as well. So that means when you uh, plug them in and you've powered it up, that the system can automatically see that. And so what you would do then is just um, you're just basically assigning areas and locations. 
and uh, and you can do that all through a wizard that kind of basically walks you through the whole process. So the programming of the system is very very straightforward. <clears throat> Under state and control, uh, this is just different areas. If you want to go into manually and control specific um, uh, things within the system, you can also do a walk test of the system here. So imagine if you're installing the system, you finish programming on your laptop, but you want to do a walk test. Well, you can now do that on your phone. Uh, you don't have to uh, carry your laptop around and, and you can go through the various functions and check them as you go and then print a report to indicate that um, everything has been done, um, uh, you know, in terms of programming of the entire system. You can do a hardware test as well, see all the peripherals, everything within the system through this area. Uh, configuration area is, is essentially a um, area where we can manually go into each specific area. So as an example, if I was going to go and program users, I would simply go into this area here and uh, you can see, you know, sample users uh, sort of credentials that they have already programmed. Uh, if we wanted to add some, we would simply click on add uh, as opposed to doing it through the commissioning checklist. The commissioning checklist is something you'd probably have set up uh, initially as the installer default. And then when you turn it over to your customer, uh, you can take that out of there and you can uh, set, set up the interface according to their login so they can only uh, do certain things with the system. You can also host this as a solution and, and manage all this for your end user as well, uh, because it's very obviously very easily done remotely um, through, 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 the, um, through the Sky Tunnel service, which allows you to any browser log in uh, remotely as well. So you, that's an option as well. A uh, couple other quick things uh, before I wrap up. Um, the, um, the backup restore function is something that we need to do with <clears throat> with access control systems. So very easy to just download the backup here if you wanted to to an external drive. Uh, restoring uh, backups and defaulting the systems very easily done here as well. We can get full system overview. Something I get asked a lot about is reports. Um, in, and so select the type of report that you're looking for uh, and then the format you want to get it in, you simply download it. And, and here's an example of <clears throat> a user uh, current location report that we can use. Um, so, or, or an access history report. So this is an example of what might come up with uh, one of those reports, pardon me. And then uh, last but not least is the firmware update. If, if, if I didn't go through the yellow box as I indicated earlier, then what I would simply do is uh, click on update controller or modules and we can do that automatically uh, through the hosted solution. One last thing before I finish, uh, we also have a, a neat way to uh, brand the system. Uh, for your company. So we can actually change out this Inception logo that you see up in the top left corner, and we can put your company uh, logo in there very easily uh, simply by going into uh, configuration, general, system, and then down here, and you can see custom branding and allows us to customize messaging and branding on the screen. You see how easy it is to interact through the system very quick. So um, but I think that wraps up uh, in terms of the uh, demo. I'm going to just turn it back over to Steve here. I'm just going to get back to the right screen. And that would conclude the presentation. Great. Thank you, Wilmer. Thanks, Steve. If, if anyone has any questions, please type them into your Q&A window now, and I will uh, proceed to stumble through them. <laughs> it looks like we got a, a few uh, lined up here. Uh, first off, Omar, is there an API to interface with other building systems? There is. I would say um, for sure there is. Uh, we, we have that option available. I would say with Inception, uh, it wouldn't be quite as extensive as it would be with Integrity. I, I would say reach out to me and, and, and let me know sort of what the specifics are, what you're trying to do, and then we we'll talk about the details. It can get pretty complex as far as integration goes. Um, but we do have APIs available that you, you can do that for sure. Okay. Are your Cypher readers wired back to the controller via proprietary RS-485 format, or does the controller have native OSDP? Um, it's, yeah, that's a good question. It's, I believe it's, it's 485. <laughs> Okay, I can uh, yeah. uh, always send these to you after the fact if you want to uh, shoot people yeah, emails sure. with the answers. Yep. Okay, uh, next up is the elevator board for a single cab application. Uh, we can support up to uh, 32 cabs or 96 floors. Okay, uh, is this system ULC approved for fire panel monitoring? Not for fire panel, but for intrusion it is. Great, thanks. Uh, and we are working, up. sorry, sorry, just to yeah. finish that up on the fire side, um, we're, we're definitely 
going to get it ULC approved, but it's not at this time, I would say it's probably six months to a year off. Okay. Uh, what is the maximum users and events? Uh, maximum number of users is 10,000 um, and the maximum amount of events is 250,000. Excellent. This, I like this next question. I might want to get in on it. Does Interrange fly people into Australia for training? Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, we, we do not, uh, as you'd expect. That's a good question. Yeah. But um, no, uh, with Inception, uh, a lot of the installs that we have thus far, um, you know, guys have just done by going through the commissioning checklist. Uh, but uh, we do have a free online training that takes anywhere between three and four hours. It actually walks you through the setup of hardware. So it's not just uh, a matter of kind of watching a screen and going through the slides. It's, it's actually walking through the actual programming of the system. So if you're, if you're going to do that, you, you probably want to look at uh, getting a demo system. And, and, and um, the demo system would include basic access control. So you'd have a reader obviously a couple of cards, a controller, and then you would have the alarm keypad as well so that you can actually program alarm functionality, a few inputs and things like that. So uh, you, you get kind of trained on how to deploy a combined system, not just access versus, you know, um, uh, intrusion. Okay, thank you. Uh, can the controllers work offline? Absolutely, yeah. They, they don't need to be online at all. They, they essentially, uh, just need to be power up and connected to the 45 LAN, which obviously connects all the expansion. Um, and then it's really uh, the, the system is completely operational through the controller. And then you just choose to access the controller uh, when, when is appropriate. So that would either A, be for programming or for a user if they want to control the system uh, very easy. So they'd go through the browser and then they would um, you know, go into the dashboard and then they would have control of the system. I, I neglected to mention earlier uh, as well, we do have a, um, uh, a smart uh, phone, smart device app for this basic functionality. We, we sort of feel that the browser uh, provides us with a, a lot more options overall, because it doesn't matter which device you're on. With some of the applications that are developed these days, uh, you know, they're optimized for the iPhone, but as soon as you try to use it on the iPad, it's not the right size and things like that with this. Uh, we have that response and design with our, our browser interface, so it allows us to kind of have some flexibility on how we do that. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, for the Sky Tunnel, is cell backup available or just phone line and LAN? Uh, cellular is definitely available. So, um, yeah, so, so as far as alarm monitoring, if, if we're going, um, uh, with alarm monitoring, if we're going through Sky Tunnel, it's it's an IP connection, and then we could back that up with a uh, a cellular connection as well. So that's easy to do for for the hosting side. Um, it's it's just really just needs to be connected to the internet. It's it's not mission critical like obviously monitoring is. So, um, but yeah, we do have cellular available as a backup for sure. Okay. Uh, looks like we have time for just one more question. Uh, so for those uh, who still have questions, please type them in and I'll make sure to get those over to Omer as soon as we're done. Or you can send them direct to him on his uh, email there, which is on screen right now. Uh, so our last question, can you lock down a building or area? Um, that is a good question. I know we can with uh, <clears throat> our integrity solution very, very easily. Um, I'd have to check into that and get back to you. I actually haven't been asked that question on the inception product. My answer would, my assumption would be uh, yes, because you know we uh, we do that you know through other um, through our other systems. So I think the sort of philosophy is something that's required. But uh, I'd, I'd have to just double check on that one. Okay. Well, that brings us uh, to the end of today's session. Thank you for joining us, and thank you to Omer and to Interrange for their support. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Take care, everybody.